Welcome back to part two of our Van Gogh mystery. Today we're going to learn about image filtering. Last time we saw that removing rows and columns can create noisy images. So what's the right way to resize an image? Here we're trying to take the block of pixels on the left and shrink it into the single pixel on the right. In the window on the left there are three black pixels and one white one. So it should be one quarter white. That's one quarter of 255, which is 64. And you can repeat this for each of the pixels on the right. This is called mean filtering. Let's try this with the new image F. And this time we won't do resizing, just filtering. F contains a light dot and a little square against a black background. What happens to these objects when they are filtered? The mean of these nine values is 10. And we'll keep getting 10 as long as there is only one light dot in the window. And it continues for the next row. Here you see that the light dot on the left turned into a dim square of 10s on the right after filtering. And the little square on the left gets blurred. So let's write this equation as a mathematical formula. Remember that f is a set of samples of a continuous function. These samples are at the centers of the squares with the origin in the bottom left. x increases from left to right and y from bottom to top. So f of 3 comma 0 is the value of the function at this point. Now we're going to store the image as an array. Arrays are represented a bit differently, as rows and columns, with the origin in the top left. So to convert from one to the other, we first have to swap x and y flip the vertical direction, and move the origin to the bottom. You can just store this formula as a macro in your program to take care of this conversion automatically. All right, so what's the formula for mean filtering? We're going to take a pixel f of x comma y and average it with this neighbor and all the others. Here's the formula, which you can write as a double summation. That's it. One funny thing about mean filtering is it turns bright dots into dim squares. So if you mean filter the starry night image, you get this result. And you can see those squares. That's weird and not very star-like. We can make these stars look better with a simple fix to our formula. We're going to add a weighting matrix H called a kernel. We're also going to stick that 1 over 9 scale factor into this kernel. And instead of just 3 by 3, we can make this work for any size filter by specifying the radius in the summation. This formula has a name. It's called cross-correlation. And it's very similar to something called convolution, where the kernel is flipped horizontally and vertically before being applied. Both formulas give the same result for symmetric kernels. So what's the convolution kernel for mean filtering? Well, we're applying the same weight to each pixel. And don't forget to divide by 9. We can also do weighted averages. This kernel gives more weight to the center pixel. It approximates a Gaussian function. It does a much better job blurring stars and just about everything else. They don't look like squares anymore. What does this kernel do? Any guesses? Let's apply it and find out. The top left kernel entry multiplies the top left pixel in the window. The result is zero. Let's add in the next pixel with its weight, also zero, and so on. Here, both the weight and the pixel are positive, and the rest are zero. We put the result in G. Here's the complete filtered result. It's a vertical edge detector. Some entries are negative here, so you may have to rescale and add an offset to convert them back to zero to 255. What will it do to the Van Gogh? Cool, it's an emboss effect. Okay, so now we know how to do filtering, but what does this have to do with solving our Van Gogh problem? Let's try an experiment. Before downsampling, let's blur our image a little. We'll apply a Gaussian filter. This is basically a blurring operation. Then throw out every other row and column, and so on. Hey. This fixes the splotching problem, 
But why? What's going on here? Stay tuned for part three for the exciting conclusion of our mystery.